we were not leading against illegal immigration at all. In fact, we were one of the weaker states. At a response to the current crisis in Haiti, the Caribbean country is in the midst of a political meltdown. Where and even the U.S. Marines are being sent into Haiti to help secure the U.S. Embassy there. But And Governor Ron DeSantis is taking action to make sure Florida is prepared for a possible mass migration. Right, the author said it looked uh, straight, it looked like it was straight out of a movie. Now, this was coordinated. Well, with the chaos in Haiti getting even worse, Governor Ron DeSantis says the state is ramping up its response to possible mass migration. Potential Haitian migration. Republican Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida recently mobilized over 250 law enforcement officers and soldiers to the Florida Keys, citing concerns over a potential influx of Haitian migrants fleeing crime in their home country. This move characterized by his office as a response to the possibility for invasion, amounts to nearly two personnel deployed for each Haitian migrant repatriated by the U.S. Coast Guard in the last five months. Haitian migrants have long attempted to reach Florida by boat, seeking refuge from the dire circumstances in their impoverished nation. Governor DeSantis had previously deployed state resources to the Keys in an effort to deter migrants. The latest order for additional personnel aircraft and boats came in response to escalated crime in Haiti in recent days. Despite these concerns, the U.S. Coast Guard has not observed any significant increase in migrant traffic in the waters off Florida. Chief Petty Officer Stephen Lehman of the Coast Guard's Miami Division confirmed that there was nothing out of the ordinary, with resources on standby in case of an influx. We were not leading against illegal immigration at all. In fact, we were one of the weaker states. Now, since October 1st of 2022, the Coast Guard has interdicted over 5,100 Cubans. But there is certainly plenty of history for that. And with all of the focus right now on the border and border security. Where there's been an increase for over a year now of Haitian migrants who are coming over because of the violence and because of people like. Since October 1, the Coast Guard has repatriated 131 migrants found at sea to Haiti including 65 individuals discovered on a boat near the Bahamas last week. In light of these developments, Governor DeSantis's office justified the deployment of state resources by asserting Florida's right to defend itself from potential invasion. Governor DeSantis has prominently featured immigration as a key theme, particularly during his unsuccessful bid for the Republican presidential nomination. He has touted his administration's use of state funds to transport migrants from the U.S.-Mexico border to California, as well as flying Venezuelan migrants from Florida to Massachusetts under a state-sponsored program. Haitian migration to the U.S. has been significant in recent years, with many fleeing their homeland following the devastating 2010 earthquake. The recent escalation of crime in Haiti, marked by a series of gang attacks that have ravaged the country, has prompted further displacement and instability. Armed gangs now wield considerable power in the capital city of Port-au-Prince, controlling a significant portion of the urban area. Amidst this turmoil, the United Nations Food Agency has sounded the alarm, reporting that millions of Haitians face acute food insecurity, with a million individuals teetering on the brink of famine. In response to the crisis, a coalition of Caribbean nations and the U.S. has proposed the establishment of a presidential council in Haiti, comprising influential figures who would oversee the appointment of an interim prime minister and facilitate presidential elections. However, this plan has faced resistance from certain Haitian political factions. The Haitian Crisis The plight of Haiti, marked by political turmoil, economic instability and natural disasters, has long been a source of concern for the international community. However, recent developments have brought the country to the brink of collapse, with escalating gang crime and chaos exacerbating an already dire situation. Against this backdrop, the experiences of individuals like Eliantes Jean-Jacques, a Haitian immigrant residing in Florida, offer a poignant glimpse into the human toll of Haiti's deepening crisis. For Jean-Jacques, who has called Florida home for over three decades, the latest wave of crime in Haiti strikes a particularly ominous chord. Accustomed to the country's enduring struggles, he finds the current situation to be more alarming than previous crises. Armed gangs, emboldened by their apparent superiority over the beleaguered police force, 
have seized control of vital infrastructure and instigated widespread lawlessness. In the absence of effective governance, the streets of Haiti have become a battleground, where innocent civilians like Jean-Jacques' relatives are caught in the crossfire of crime and fear. The personal tragedies endured by Jean-Jacques underscore the human cost of Haiti's descent into chaos. Having lost his brother and cousin to the crime perpetrated by armed groups, he now grapples with the uncertainty surrounding the safety of his remaining family members in Haiti. What are we doing to prepare for that wave and to ensure that these people... At a response to the current crisis in Haiti, the Caribbean country is in the midst of a political meltdown. We're free and chaos. Florida's governor deploying more patrols to the state's southern coast and plans to install new leadership in Haiti. Good evening. The U.S. Coast Guard says they have not seen a mass migration from Haiti yet. Against this backdrop, armed gangs have capitalized on the vacuum of governance, vying for control of territory and resources while terrorizing civilians with impunity. In the face of such multifaceted crises, the international community faces a moral imperative to respond with urgency and compassion. Efforts to address the root cause of Haiti's turmoil must prioritize the protection of human rights, the promotion of democratic governance, and the provision of humanitarian assistance to those most in need. For Florida's Haitian community, the call to action is deeply personal. As they bear witness to the suffering of their loved ones in Haiti, they are reminded of their shared humanity and interconnectedness. In their advocacy for a more just and equitable response to Haiti's crisis, they draw strength from their resilience, solidarity, and unwavering commitment to the pursuit of a better future for all Haitians. Assessing the Situation The ongoing crisis in Haiti, marked by political instability, economic hardship, and escalating gang crime, has sparked concerns of a potential surge in Haitian migrants seeking refuge in Florida. However, despite the deepening turmoil in Haiti, a significant increase in migrant arrivals has yet to materialize. This discrepancy between expectations and reality prompts a closer examination of the factors at play and the responses undertaken by authorities in Florida. Tessa Petit, executive director of the Florida Immigrant Coalition and a native of Haiti, provides insight into the complex dynamics driving migration from Haiti. She highlights the pervasive sense of insecurity and desperation gripping the country, which compels individuals to embark on perilous journeys in search of safety and stability. The closure of borders and airports further exacerbates the plight of Haitians, leaving them with few options but to risk their lives at sea. In response to the perceived threat of a migrant influx, Governor Ron DeSantis has authorized the deployment of additional personnel to the Florida Keys, citing concerns over the possibility of invasion by Haitian migrants. Important to note the Biden administration has been and still is deporting Haitian nationals that come. Existed before, there were 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince who didn't have enough to eat. Before this crisis, this is making things worse. And even the U.S. Marines are being sent into Haiti to help secure the U.S. Embassy there. But And surrounds after armed gangs carried out two serious jailbreaks. This deployment includes law enforcement officers from various agencies as well as soldiers from the National Guard and State Guard. While DeSantis's actions may be motivated by a desire to address security concerns, they have drawn criticism from community leaders and elected officials. Critics, including Florida State Rep. Dodie Joseph, argue that DeSantis's response reflects political opportunism rather than genuine concern for the well-being of refugees. Instead of deploying resources to intercept migrants, they advocate for a more compassionate approach that prioritizes humanitarian assistance and collaboration with federal partners to address the root causes of migration. Joseph emphasizes the importance of treating refugees with dignity and compassion, rather than resorting to heavy-handed tactics for political gain. The absence of a significant increase in Haitian migrant arrivals underscores the need for a nuanced and evidence-based approach to addressing the crisis. While the situation in Haiti remains dire, it is essential to recognize that migration is driven by complex factors that cannot be addressed through militarized responses alone. Instead, efforts should focus on addressing the underlying causes of migration, including political instability and economic insecurity. 
Furthermore, the international community must play a role in supporting Haiti's efforts to restore stability and promote development. This includes providing humanitarian aid, supporting democratic governance, and addressing the root causes of crime and insecurity. By working collaboratively with Haitian authorities and civil society organizations, the international community can help create conditions conducive to the voluntary return and reintegration of displaced individuals. While concerns over a potential surge in Haitian migrants are valid, the current response in Florida raises questions about the effectiveness and appropriateness of militarized approaches to migration. Instead of resorting to heavy-handed tactics, policymakers should prioritize humanitarian assistance and collaboration with international partners to address the root causes of migration and support the well-being of refugees. Governor DeSantis is deploying the state guard to the Keys to prevent what he believes could be a potential influx of illegal immigrants. And Governor Ron DeSantis is taking action to make sure Florida is prepared for a possible mass migration. Are bracing for a possible surge of Haitian refugees packing into boats and arriving on our shores. Plea as to when uh, to expect the troops, the prime minister himself should be on his way back. Florida's enforcement measures. Amidst escalating crime and unrest in Haiti, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has announced intensified enforcement measures to address concerns of potential migration surges and ensure the safety of the state's residents. The interception of a vessel near the Florida coast carrying Haitian migrants, arms, drugs, and night vision gear has underscored the urgency of the situation. DeSantis highlighted the interception as part of ongoing enforcement efforts, emphasizing the need for heightened vigilance amidst the unrest in Haiti. With gangs wreaking havoc in the capital and thousands of inmates freed from prisons, the situation in Haiti has raised concerns about a potential influx of migrants. The interception of the vessel, coupled with the deployment of additional personnel and aircraft to the Florida coast, reflects the state's proactive approach to border security. Since January 2023, Florida officials have collaborated with the Coast Guard to intercept over 670 vessels transporting more than 13,500 illegal immigrants. DeSantis reiterated the deterrence message, emphasizing the dangers of attempting to reach Florida by sea and the high likelihood of interception. People are not paroled into the United States as the administration has done with people on the southern border. With the port now being closed, uh, the, the, the real risk is that the 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince were acutely food insecure. The American embassy there, and at the same time, Governor DeSantis is sending more officers and soldiers to South Florida and the Keys. He's Haitian American. He said that the words of Governor Ron DeSantis resonate in this community. This commitment to border security aligns with the state's broader efforts to safeguard its residents and uphold law and order. Assistant Secretary of Defense Rebecca Zimmerman acknowledged the potential for a mass migration event from Haiti and affirmed the Pentagon's readiness to offer further assistance to the Coast Guard if necessary. The Department of Homeland Security closely monitors migration flows from Haiti and the wider Caribbean region, but observes that migration remains relatively low. Individuals intercepted at sea are subject to immediate repatriation to their countries of origin, reflecting the state's commitment to enforcing immigration laws and deterring unauthorized entry. In addition to enforcement measures, Governor DeSantis has approved legislative action aimed at strengthening immigration laws. Three bills concerning immigration have been signed into law, including measures to toughen penalties for driving without a license and for crimes committed by previously deported undocumented immigrants. Another bill prohibits jurisdictions from recognizing IDs distributed by other states to illegal immigrants, further bolstering efforts to combat illegal immigration and enhance public safety. The combination of enforcement measures and legislative action reflects Florida's proactive approach to addressing the challenges posed by migration from Haiti amidst the ongoing crisis. By enhancing border security, enforcing immigration laws, and deterring unauthorized entry, the state aims to protect its residents and uphold the rule of law. As the situation in Haiti continues to evolve, Florida remains vigilant and prepared to respond to any potential threats to its security and well-being. And we're told that the violence has now spread to more affluent areas in the northern part of uh, Port-au-Prince. Monitors waters for migrants trying to reach the Florida coast from air, land and sea. There's no evidence of it. Right now, people cannot leave 
their their house they you know there's no public transportation clear of Haiti airspace the others kind of clapped and said yeah you know we're safe uh, my wife and I were kind of hit with a Florida's response Ron DeSantis made the announcement on Friday that state law enforcement had seized a boat approaching the Florida coast that was transporting a number of Haitian migrants along with arms narcotics and night vision equipment an interdiction order was issued by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Offices against a boat carrying 25 individuals suspected of being Haitian illegal immigrants. They were boating very recklessly, which would potentially endanger other folks, DeSantis said, adding that the interdiction had occurred recently in the last two weeks. The group's possession of arms, drugs, and night vision gear was also mentioned. That vessel was interdicted near the Sebastian Inlet, and those illegal aliens were turned over to the Coast Guard for deportation, according to him. At the same news conference where he signed three bills to discourage illegal immigration to Florida, DeSantis made the announcement. In response to the recent events in Haiti and the possibility of a surge in sea migration from the country, the Republican governor of Florida earlier this week announced the deployment of more personnel and planes to the Florida coast. The crime in the Caribbean nation has reached new heights as gangs seize control of the city, set fire to police stations, and attack the main airport. Additionally, gangs have freed thousands of inmates from some of the biggest institutions through raids. President Biden and his administration to immediately convene an in-person multi-agency. Um, we are uncharted territory. We are approaching constitutional Chaos. But Governor Ron DeSantis says Florida will do whatever it has to to protect its shores. An anti-terrorism team of U.S. Marines has been sent to the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince to... Additionally, DHS has stated that it is keeping an eye on developments, but has emphasized that migratory flows in the Caribbean are still low. Additionally, it forewarned that anybody attempting to breach the border would be returned to their home country. U.S. policy is to deport non-citizens who do not have a legitimate reason to be in the country or who do not fear persecution or torture. It is our long-standing policy and procedure to repatriate those who are interdicted at sea immediately. A representative for the U.S. stated that the country sends back or repatriates individuals detained at sea to Haiti, Cuba, the Bahamas, and the Dominican Republic. Three pieces of immigration-related legislation were also signed by DeSantis on Friday. The maximum sentence for anyone caught driving without a license was raised. A third measure would make it unlawful for any jurisdiction to acknowledge identification cards issued to illegal immigrants by other jurisdictions, while the second bill would increase punishments for crimes committed by deported illegal immigrants upon their return to the nation. Overall, Florida's response to the Haiti crisis reflects a multifaceted approach encompassing interceptions, enforcement measures, and legislative initiatives. By bolstering border security, deterring illegal immigration, and enacting stricter penalties, the state aims to safeguard its residents and uphold the rule of law amidst a challenging and evolving situation in Haiti. The country's government is collapsing after its prime minister, Ariel Henry, resigned. Rafts of water and radios, but they're only dropped in certain occasions, either when the migrant vessels capsized. The State Department and Pentagon are on alert and keeping a close eye on what's happening on the ground in Haiti. Boat in their vessel, they had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear, uh, and were... U.S. sends Marines to Haiti. As the nation suffers through a political transition amid an increase in gang crime, the U.S. has dispatched a specialized Marine unit to help secure the U.S. Embassy in Haiti, officials announced on Wednesday. A committee of Haitian leaders is being established by Haiti, the Caribbean community, and the U.S. to replace Prime Minister Ariel Henry and steer the troubled country toward new elections. Henry announced on Monday that he will stand down once a transitional presidential council is in place and that he has selected an interim leader to succeed him. Henry is facing pressure to step down from the U.S., the Caribbean community, gangs, and regular Haitians. The Marine Fleet Anti-Terrorism Security Team, or FAST, was sent by U.S. Southern Command, which oversees U.S. military operations in the area, on Wednesday to maintain strong security capabilities at the embassy in Port-au-Prince and conduct relief in place of our current Marines at the State Department's request. To enact harsh penalties for people that are bringing fentanyl 
into our community 99% of the time. And for those who are there, leave as soon as you can uh, feasibly do so without putting yourself at risk. As we speak, uh, but nobody knows for sure where he is at this moment. Uh, and as such is the... Right, the author said it looked uh, straight, it looked like it was straight out of a movie. Now, this was coordinated. Speaking on the condition of anonymity to discuss a classified and continuing mission, a U.S. defense official stated that dozens of fast Marines from Yorktown, Virginia, participated in the embassy deployment. Marines guard diplomatic missions all throughout the world, but the fact that the specialized fast Marines have arrived highlights how dire things are in Haiti. Gangs have attacked the main ports, the international airport, and at least a dozen police stations this month, liberating thousands of convicts in the process. They have also attacked two prisons, there are too many bodies piling up in the capital streets for government officials to remove. The last MP's mandates ended in January 2023, leaving the position of President of Haiti vacant. Henry, who was nominated by Moise just a few days before his slaying, is now in charge of the government. The 74-year-old neurosurgeon has come under fire for not putting an end to the bloodshed or organizing fresh elections. When the crime recently escalated, the Prime Minister was in Nairobi to mobilize support for a Kenya-led security force authorized by the United Nations for Haiti. He's not been able to come back. His last known location was the Caribbean U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. The United Nations Security Council resolution authorizing the multinational security support operation to Haiti was drafted by the Biden administration, which also spent over a year looking for a nation to lead the mission help protect the U.S. Embassy there. This, as Kenya, is halting plans to deploy at least a 1,000 police officers. A asylum right at this point has resigned, so now you don't have an interim government, you don't have anyone who's actually taken over, so... We begin in Haiti. A 72-hour state of emergency has been declared in Port-au-Prince. But right now, the security situation is extremely dire. According to officials, the U.S. will contribute $300 million in financing intelligence, airlift, medical support, and logistics. However, it will not participate in street patrols. The Kenyan police units that are about to be deployed are being screened by the State Department to ensure that they have not committed any abuses of human rights. Southern Command stated, We are working with Haitian, Kenyan, and other partners to expedite its deployment to support the Haitian National Police and to restore security in Haiti. This week, the Department of Defense doubled our funding for the multinational security support mission. The Department of Defense is positioned to offer the MSS enabling support, including airlift, information sharing, planning assistance, and medical support. The U.S. mobilized the embassy in Haiti for a second time in a week on Tuesday night with the fast deployment. Planners and logisticians were sent out on Sunday, according to a second defense official from the U.S. According to Southern Command, the goal of that action was to allow our embassy mission operations to continue and enable non-essential personnel to depart. By any other than legal means, now there is a growing call for that to stop. That was developed by CARICOM and all of the Haitian stakeholders to expedite a political transition. If, 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 if I was there, I would do so because the situation is so bad. The ambush coming just days after gang members freed thousands of jailed in the country's two biggest prisons. Control of Maine Airport. In an outburst of crime that included a mass breakout from the nation's two largest jails, heavily armed gangs attempted to take over Haiti's Maine International Airport on Monday, exchanging gunfire with police and troops in the latest attack on important government buildings. At the time of the incident, to St. Louverture International Airport was closed, meaning that neither aircraft nor passengers were present. As gangs attempted to access the airport premises, an armored truck on the tarmac fired shots in an attempt to dissuade them, sending numerous staff and other personnel running for their lives. Associated Press journalists witnessed this action. As of late Monday, it remained unclear whether the attack, the largest to target the airport in Haitian history, was effective. Although there have been regular gang attacks, the airport was briefly hit by gunfire last week, but the gangs were unable to penetrate or take control of the facility. The attack happened just hours after Haitian authorities imposed a curfew at night in response to crime over the weekend 
in which armed gang members stormed the country's two largest jails and released thousands of prisoners. According to UN spokesperson Stefan Dujaric, the Secretary General is deeply concerned by the rapidly deteriorating security situation in Port-au-Prince, where armed gangs have intensified their attacks on critical infrastructure over the weekend. On Sunday night, a 72-hour state of emergency was declared. The government said that it will make an effort to find the runaway prisoners, including those from a prison where most of the inmates were being held pending trial and where some of them were suspected of slaying people, kidnappings, and other crimes. The acting Prime Minister, Finance Minister Patrick Boisvert, ordered the police to use every legal means at their disposal to enforce the curfew and apprehend all offenders, the statement read. It was once thought that up to 80% of the capital, Port-au-Prince, was controlled by gangs. They are picking hitherto unimaginable targets, such as the central bank, and coordinating their attacks more and more. DeSantis adds Florida Highway Patrol will also send deputies and drones for surveillance. Well, with the chaos in Haiti getting even worse, Governor Ron DeSantis says the state is ramping up its response to possible mass migration to illegal immigration. Uh, since we've come in, uh, we've done things like ban sanctuary cities. Uh, at interim, at interim Prime Minister uh, Mr. Boisvert, who has taken last week. Prime Minister Ariel Henry visited Kenya in an attempt to win over backing for a security force supported by the UN to aid in stabilizing Haiti during its struggle with the more potent criminal organizations. To address the pressing security requirements of the Haitian people and prevent the country from plunging further into chaos, according to Dujeric, the Secretary General emphasized the need for immediate action, particularly in terms of providing financial support for the mission. According to the UN, Haiti's national police has about 9,000 officers to protect over 11 million people. They are consistently outnumbered and outmatched. The violent weekend represented a new low in Haiti's violent decline. Since Thursday, gangs in Port-au-Prince have increased their coordinated attacks on official institutions like the National Soccer Stadium and International Airport, slaying at least nine people, four of them police officers. Yet Haitians were taken aback by the attack on the National Penitentiary late on Saturday, according to the Office of Citizen Protection, all but 98 of the 3,798 prisoners housed at the penitentiary managed to get out. Meanwhile, 1,033 inmates, including 298 prisoners, escaped from the Croix de Bouquet jail. Governor DeSantis has also called for 250 law enforcement officers, including state guardsmen, to come tonight. Gangs run over 80 percent of Port-au-Prince. Now the U.S. military is sending an anti-terrorism team to protect. Areas where that chaos is happening, we know that there are a number of U.S. citizens that are literally stranded. There is no, by all accounts, no evidence right now of a pending mass exodus from Haiti. Following the mass escape, the office stated late on Monday that it was extremely concerned for the safety of judges, prosecutors, victims, attorneys, and other people. It went on to say that it deplored and condemned the policy of nonchalance displayed by government representatives in the wake of the attacks. Three slayed with gunshot wounds were found at the prison door on Sunday following the raid at the penitentiary. In another neighborhood, people were passing by roadblocks made of burning tires while the bloodied bodies of two guys their wrists bound behind their backs, lay face down. A select group of 12 individuals choose to remain incarcerated, including 18 former Colombian soldiers who were charged with acting as hired arms in July 2021 in the slaying of Haitian President Jovenel Moise. One of the men, Francisco Uribe, sent a message on social media that went viral and pleaded, please, please help us. They are slaughtering individuals without distinction inside the cells. The men should get special protection, according to a request made to Haiti by Colombia's foreign ministry. Around 1,400 prisoners were housed in a second jail in Port-au-Prince that was also overrun. Community gathering to meet with members of the Haitian American community. Guantanamo Bay to process Haitian migrants if there should be an exodus to the U.S. Uh, we make sure in Florida not to do things like sanctuary jurisdictions do. It has become daily life here in Haiti. Tires burning on city streets, protesters furious. Numerous neighborhoods in the capital reported gunfire. 
Many locals were without internet access on Sunday because according to Haiti's largest mobile network, a fiber optic cable link was severed during the outburst. All official travel to Haiti has been suspended, according to the U.S. Embassy, following gang-related slaying at the country's international airport last week. It asked every American citizen to leave as quickly as possible on Sunday night. While providing financial and logistical support, the Biden administration has declined to commit soldiers to any international force for Haiti. The government stated that it was gravely concerned about the rapidly deteriorating security situation. The increase in attacks comes after weeks of fatal protests, during which the Prime Minister traveled to Kenya in an attempt to advance plans for an East African nation to lead a UN-backed security mission. After Moise was assassinated, Henry became Prime Minister. Since then, there haven't been any plans for legislative or presidential elections for nearly 10 years. Jeremy Cherizier, a gang federation leader and former special police officer known as Barbecue, has taken credit for the recent spike in attacks. Capturing Haiti's police head and government officials is the aim, he claimed, in order to stop Henry from coming back. When asked whether he thought it was safe to return home, the prime minister brushed off calls for his resignation and remained silent. As the gangs and, and, and other bad actors continue uh, the reign of terror on the population. That majority of them from Michigan literally only had about 60 seconds to run to that helicopter for their airlift. Terrian and political crisis unfolding in Haiti. Today, the Caribbean country finds itself without a single elected government official. Armed gangs in Haiti attempt to take control of Haiti's international airport. DeSantis's major policy proposal. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Monday suggested a broad crackdown on illegal immigration including the deployment of U.S. military personnel to the border and the mass arrest and deportation of unauthorized individuals. This was his first significant policy announcement of his 2024 presidential campaign. DeSantis will also build a wall at the southern border and abolish birthright citizenship, two policies that were previously supported by Donald Trump, his main opponent for the GOP nomination. The immigration platform, as written, takes a tough stance on the southern border and the nation's unauthorized population. However, according to DeSantis, the execution would be considerably more brutal and would put to the test the legal limits that have long established who is allowed to be in the country and how the government can deal with those who are not. DeSantis declared on Monday that he would permit the use of lethal force against anyone who tried to enter the U.S. by breaking through border barriers as he was speaking here in Eagle Pass. Plane uh, carrying uh, passengers has left uh, Haitian airspace and is on the way. Take the people on board those unsafe vessels off and then take them back to their country of origin or... First of probably many flights to bring people, uh, U.S. citizens, Florida residents, obviously. The governor says the state is supplementing the efforts of the Coast Guard to stop Haitian refugees before they reach Florida. He concurred with an audience member who compared the influx of unauthorized migrants to an act of war. Trump campaign advisor Jason Miller shared two images on Twitter, one showing Trump standing next to a border wall and the other a still from a DeSantis 2018 campaign ad in which the candidate urges his young child to build the wall. The advertisement, which ran during the GOP gubernatorial primary, highlighted Trump's support for DeSantis. Miller declared President Trump as Fisher-Price in comparison to Ron DeSantis. When questioned about how he was different from Trump, DeSantis emphasized that he would prioritize the border right away. On day one, it will be a national emergency for us. On the first day, every resource that is available will be mobilized. DeSantis stated on Monday at the Rio Grande River, we have a plan for all the different levels of authority that we have to be able to bring this to bear. DeSantis has repeatedly intervened in the national immigration issue while serving as governor. He organized two aircraft to transport migrants from San Antonio to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts in September of last year. The operation was widely criticized by Democrats and proponents of immigration reform, but it also garnered him a great deal of acclaim from conservative media. 670 vessels carrying over 13,500 illegal aliens. Mass migration concerns. Tonight, Florida politicians, including our Governor Ron DeSantis. We have been telling Americans, do not go to Haiti. 
Do not travel there. It's not safe to do so. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, Haiti is on a brink of becoming a failed state. He sent migrants from El Paso, Texas to Sacramento, California on two additional planes earlier this month as a follow-up to those earlier attempts. During his more than four years as governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis has not only campaigned for new legislation against sanctuary cities and mandating that employers verify the status of their employees, but he has also dispatched Florida law enforcement and the National Guard to the southern border to support Texas's enforcement operations. Throughout his first month of the presidential campaign, DeSantis has frequently brought attention to those initiatives. With his declaration on Monday, he is making his first attempt at approaching a problem that has plagued political leaders for decades in a more proactive manner. DeSantis promises to be more effective than Trump while taking a stance far to the right of the other candidates in the GOP field, much as he has done on other topics thus far. DeSantis backers have committed to this approach in an effort to negotiate a split GOP field and a base that remains fond of the former president, even as Democrats believe it lessens the governor of Florida's appeal to general election voters. The Democratic National Committee's Amar Musa stated in a statement, Ron DeSantis has repeatedly used young children and families as pawns in his shallow political stunts to pander to the MAGA base. This most recent plan is more of the same, just political posturing that is a rehash of the same heartless and brutal Trump administration tactics that destroyed our immigration system. Voters will not be deterred by DeSantis' meaningless talking points from realizing that his frantic MAGA campaign is more interested in winning over right-wing fringe supporters than in genuinely finding solutions to the nation's problems. In addition, DeSantis declared that he will abolish the catch-and-release program, which permits certain peaceful people to remain in the country as they wait for a court hearing on their asylum and immigration claims. As an alternative, DeSantis's plan asks for the imprisonment of undocumented individuals until their hearing date. This would probably result in tens of thousands of people being detained by the U.S. government indefinitely. Additionally, DeSantis has promised to deport criminal aliens. His plan did not clarify whether someone who is convicted of a crime while in the U.S. or those without legal status are considered criminal aliens. People who overstay their visas would also be deported under DeSantis. Parts of Haiti that are dangerous, uh, we have personnel on the ground that are helping them. Get, uh, get, get where they need to be. Especially after he said that the state faces the possibility of invasion. Choose a new prime minister, an interim prime minister, to establish a national security council, and to put in place an electoral commission. General Weathers in Haiti, where they try to thwart our efforts, they actually try to dissuade us from actually being able to go in and rescue Americans. In 2022 alone, the Department of Homeland Security reports that around 850,000 foreign visitors exceeded their permitted duration of stay. Along with strengthening penalties for fentanyl traffickers and designating them as transnational criminal organizations, DeSantis pledged to hold the Mexican drug cartels accountable by approving sanctions on their leaders and other entities. If the Mexican government drags its feet, DeSantis will reserve the right to operate across the border to secure our territory from Mexican cartel activities, he said. According to the proposal, DeSantis will increase funding for the Coast Guard and the Navy and prevent precursor chemicals from entering Mexican ports if the Mexican government doesn't put an end to the cartel drug trade. He went further, suggesting that his administration would allow law enforcement to use lethal force against migrants who breached the border wall and cartel operatives and anyone thought to be participating in illegal drug trafficking during a speech on Monday in Maverick County, Texas. To win the fight, we're going to use every tool at our disposal, DeSantis declared. You have to be prepared to respond with the appropriate use of force if someone is demonstrating hostile intent or hostile action by breaching the border wall, as they are doing in other parts of the country. A reporter questioned DeSantis about whether that entailed slaying someone, to which he responded, Of course, of course you use fatal force. Would you really just let someone break into your home and injure you? How would you handle it? The Coast Guard says they will stop vessels at sea and take the people on board back to their home country. I'm here and, and, and blame me for some madman. That is not appropriate, and I'm not going to accept it. What we know is that people are constantly trying to get in. 
Guard says their mission in all of this has not changed. When they see these vessels at sea, they will interdict them. Furthermore, DeSantis intends to withhold hundreds of millions of dollars in grants from sanctuary jurisdictions that try to thwart federal immigration law. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.